I want us to talk about black man's privilege. Do you know what a black man's privilege is? So guys, I was out here busy enjoying the black privilege. Do you know what a black privilege is? A black privilege in Sweden is when you go and sit inside a train, okay? Public and you, transport. Yeah, public transport. You sit and you have a next seat to you. Do you know? Nobody comes and sits next to you. You can put your legs, you can enjoy your life. Like, you know, I've been driving so much, I didn't know that I actually had a black privilege in Sweden. <laughs> Like people pass by and they see you and they're like, mm. don't go to the next neighbor like, can I sit next? I'm like, yes, 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 yes. So we have like, yeah. unless all the seats are filled up. That's yes. When you see these no, even when yes. all the seats are filled up, they decide to stand up and hold it. Like we have the best black privilege in Sweden. No, I forgot to say, right? For you to enjoy the full black privilege, you just have to pray that there's no any other black person that comes along. Because if that black person comes, yeah, they are going to take that privilege away from you. Because they want to sit with you. They also don't want to sit. <laughs> My name is Gossi Africa, and I'm coming live from the beautiful river in my my So black man's privilege i have been the biggest victim of this i remember going to Savo west with uh kim obama and uh you know as a black no one will ever tell whether you are rich or not not unless they know your background or you you produce your financial statements so basically we were with obama one of the biggest man we have in Kenya as person who calls shots in terms of politics in this beautiful country and uh, to my surprise a Kenya wildlife service ranger discriminated us I remember doing filming and he was like don't film me and you know once you get to that park you are headed to Kilaguni. You are given, uh, you are given someone to guide you. You're given a guide. So we were with uh, some guys from Asia, and these people were getting the right attention they needed. When it came to us, the guy was so adamant to give us information, asking, you know, asking, asking the guy about where the the water is coming from, because. Basically, that's a point whereby water hoses from the ground. We are like, so where is this water coming from? The guy was not ready to give us information. Reason? He knows that a black man can never be rich. Yeah? And to my surprise, that was a black guy. Yeah? The Kenya Wildlife Service uh, Ranger was a black guy. And he discriminated. He could not give us information. So, filming him was an offense. I was like, you guy, don't don't film me. I wish I still have the video. I may be having it. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of my worst days going to the park. And uh, since that day, I've never gone to the park again. I lack humility at times, so kindly forgive me. At the end of the entire trip, Obama told me that. Uh, you need to take some money and tip these guys. I took a million shillings, then produced a note of 500 shillings. Four dollars. Yeah, then handed over to the guy. But I was like, you can, you can give them like a thousand shillings each? I was like, they don't deserve. If you don't treat me right, then there is no need for me to reciprocate. That's a lesson they learned. I still uh, have to, because that's Africa. It's not his place. And I have to keep on showcasing Africa. I, I didn't like that. I've been on different occasions, being discriminated, going to some big hotels. Those guys are taking pictures. Uh, they're taking pictures of themselves. But when it comes to me, they have to ask me. Who are you? This is my country. These are foreigners. And you discriminating me? 
I don't I really don't like that. We're going to the embassy. Someone of a different race, they give them priority by our own people. Black people, Africans, they give them priority to get the service. They need a service. When it came to me, you have to have to be screened. You remove everything, belt, your shoe, your the coins you have, everything. Those guys don't even remove nothing. I don't like that. Black man's privilege. The good thing with this, and don't ask me the reason as to why I'm coming live from the river. I like the weather here. So fresh, you're breathing fresh air. Yeah, we have some Maasai guys from there. Those boys are looking after their cattle. So, at times I'm going to some risky areas like Nairobi downtown. Those guys never worry about me. They never ask me nothing. Why? They know I'm black and I have nothing. <laughs> That's a privilege. They not after me. They not after what I'm, what I'm having. So they know even if we mark this guy, he has no money. But what will happen if you had someone else with you, someone of a different race? You become a victim. I want you to leave a comment. What was your biggest experience you had with uh, anyone of any race, whether from your race or a different race, what was your biggest experience? Leave a comment and be very genuine. Do you still wish that it continues or not? I know at times sometimes it's a privilege, but do you wish it continues or wish it, it could stop? Damn. When you're traveling with your weak African passport out there, you are not even allowed to end up in some country. Why? Because of your race. It's very hard for some of us as travelers because we really need to travel. Currently, I'm wishing I could travel to the Caribbean. But guess what? Without someone to guarantee you, show that I'm taking care of this guy, or I'm having some big sums of money in my pocket or in my, in my account, you can never be allowed to enter there. I have some of my favorite countries, the likes of Antigua, Trinidad, Jamaica, uh, Grenada, St. Kitts and Nevis, Barbados. But I, I can't travel at the moment. I have to make sure that I have a lot of money in my account. Or else I must make sure that I have someone to guarantee me to prove to the, the authorities that they will be responsible for whatever I'll be doing in their country. When time comes uh, for you to leave the country, you have to leave immediately. For other races, you are in African countries, you can always go to the, uh, approve the authorities and they're going to extend your visa. For me, extending is never easy. Or else extending is never an option. <laughs> Damn. You know what? The water is still a lot. And some days ago I told you that uh, we have a family, several families in fact, who got carried by this river. Some of them were carried, were collected from that end. Yeah, they were already dead. So I need to be careful. Or else you'll be like, uh, ah, we filmed, it, ah, we saw this guy drawn while filming. <laughs> You become famous you, when you are not alive. So those Maasai boys were looking after Keto and now it's around uh, midday. So at midday when the sun is above my head, uh, they come to water their, their cattle, their animals. 
So now I can say they are free. They are bit free. Meanwhile, whoever is watching me for the first time, consider subscribing to my channel. Share the link with your friends. Whoever is always coming back to watch me, I so much appreciate. Your boy appreciates. So the goal is to showcase Africa to the world and to show Africa, to show the world to Africa. But then we shall be traveling a lot, a lot, a lot. We just started. This is something we're doing from the deepest of the, our hearts. We love it. I love traveling. And big up to my team, the Black Jew. Yeah, people who always uh, give me the reason as to why I need to, to film every day, motivating me. They be like, Shabby, be like, uh, bro, you lacking. <laughs> You need to work. You need to work. So whenever I'm told, someone told me, I need to work. Reminds me, I need to work. Then I get busy. Yeah? We, we get our shoe dirty. We work. Yeah. But then in life, what's been your biggest motivator? For me, I can give the credit to African Tigers. I know I always talk about African Tigers, but I give credit where it deserves. Yeah, you give sister what belongs to sister. This is someone whom I've, I've watched since they were barely at 2,000 subscribers. Now I have more than that, and uh, I still watch her. She added to 300,000. I still watch her. And sometimes I remember talking negative about African tigers. But behind the scenes are like, why am I saying this? This lady is working hard. Then the next minute, I was here, I was out here defending African ladies. And be like, cause, but then she was getting a lot of hate from West Africa. And I was like, why are you talking negative about this lady? It's not that uh, I was defending a Kenyan lady, but I was defending, I, I, I was against the fact that other ladies from other con African countries are attacking their own. As, a, as, a, as ladies, you guys should always be coming together, yeah? And uh, pushing each other to achieve, but now, you fighting each other. Someone told me that ladies are their own enemies. I have no bad blood with ladies. And that's why I was there fighting for ladies. People call me the, the ladies activist. <laughs> yeah. But they, I know I have a disorder. I have to appreciate a woman. That's a disorder. But it's very normal for an African to appreciate a woman. Of course, you have your sisters, you have your mother, and, and, and probably your girlfriends and your wife. Yeah? How, how, how will you feel if I don't appreciate them? Above all, I appreciate God's creation. I need to rise up from this point. I want you to subscribe to my channel. Share the link with your friends. This is Gossi Africa. And very soon I want to be the biggest YouTuber, you know, from Africa. That will all be determined by how you guys are supporting my content and how I'm producing the content. Am I working towards it or am I just relaxing and not uh, your supporters can always be supporting you, subscribing, sharing your content but are you giving content towards achieving your goal? You need to ask yourself so. So for me, I wish I'm, I think I'm doing my best and I wish that uh, you guys gonna appreciate what I'm doing. I remember 
sitting down and um, addressing my viewers. I be like, I was like, you guys uh, should make me your favorite YouTuber, so that anytime you wake up, you think of watching my videos, and you doing so. I appreciate. Sure, I appreciate so much. So thank you. That can never go unappreciated. So those are gods. In the Maasai people. I love this. But then I, I miss uh, being in the wilderness and looking after Keto. I miss that a lot. My father always had a, a big flock of... You, got, you say a big flock of animals? <laughs> yeah. Goats. The cows. But I'm living in a, in a different generation. Instead of having such, I travel. <laughs> Damn, I love this life. I love this life. Life in the wilderness. Life in the wilderness. Very small, a very small boy is looking after a big flock. Mambo! Very small boy looking after a very big flock. So I want to be seated somewhere here. Yeah, how do I look? Do I keep on wearing this or I remove it? I know some of you have been watching me with or without it. I'm not used to it. But I, I like wearing the same when uh, the sun is above my head. I, yeah, am I? Do I remove it totally? Leave a comment there. So my name is Gossi Africa. I'm a traveler and a YouTuber based in Nairobi, Kenya. Though at the moment I travel. My work is to travel. My work is to, to showcase Africa. I want you to leave a comment. What do you wish I could showcase in Africa? So write now I'm in the Great Rift Valley, somewhere in Mai Mayu, in the interior of Mai Mayu and Suso. This is uh, Narok County. No, not Narok. It's it's Nakuru County. But Narok and uh, Nakuru, they are sister counties. So, what do you wish to see from me? Meanwhile, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Go See Africa. Have a good bye.